Welcome to my channel. So the first video I decided to film is a recap of Insecure Season 3 Episode 1, Better Life. Um, for disclaimer, I'm not going to be covering everything in the episode, so caught me a little bit of slack, and I'm going to be covering only the major plot points. So for this episode, I'm going to be covering five topics. I wrote it down on my phone, so I, um, just so I won't forget um, what's going on. So let's start off with the first topic. Um, we're going to talk about um, Issa and Daniel's relationship. So the first scene was kind of uh, hot and heavy because you already got a sex scene. Um, sometimes you forget that this is an HBO show and you're able to show all that stuff. You see Daniel having sex with his new girl, his new fling, whatever, and Issa's in the next room. Um, I thought Daniel was being mad disrespectful because as Issa mentioned later in, this, in the episode, that they have history, so, like, I don't understand how, I don't know, maybe guys and girls work differently, but, like, you're not going to be having sex with a girl next room when I was having sex with you not, not, not too long ago, that type of thing. Like, I know that we're just um, friends, but, like, to a woman, you're never just friends, that uh, type of thing. When Issa is telling um, Daniel her feelings and telling her, telling him that it was mad, disrespectful and stuff, I didn't appreciate that. I guess Daniel took it the wrong way and started trying to kiss Issa. I was just kind of like, Ugh. it was a little bit too much and I'm glad that Issa um, didn't give in to lust. <laughs> um, plus he was still seeing that girl so... You don't want um, Issa back in the situation where now Daniel is cheating on his girl or whatnot. Um, I don't really think that Issa and Daniel will work um, because I think Issa just came out of this relationship with Lawrence and I think she needs time to breathe. Her whole whole face stuff that she had last season, I think that was just a ruse. That was just a get someone under her for her to um, not feel lonely but she has to really uh, kind of think about what she's doing and like evaluate her life and see where she wants to go so for me that um, her jumping with Daniel um, won't work I think maybe in the future when Issa's kind of learned who she is as a person and is uh, has a clear mind and is ready to get into a healthy relationship, then I think that her and Daniel could work, but right now it wouldn't work. And I feel like Issa's also like using him. Um, she had said that like, uh, I know you, kinda, I know you'd be there for me and stuff, and you wouldn't say no. Um, that didn't really sound like she was professing her love. That just sounded like she was like, I know you wouldn't say no to me, so. Um, that's not a good way to start off a relationship. So, hopefully Issa is really saving her money and she can pack her stuff and really leave, and leave Daniel alone for a bit. So let's get into topic number two. Let me just check my phone. It's Molly and her job and creating these boundaries, as she says. So men she mentions it a lot in this episode. So Molly has a new job. She had left that like job that did not appreciate her, didn't want to pay her or anything. Um, and now she can kind of call the shots in her new job. She can determine how much she's going to get paid, um, vacation, benefits, and I think that um, that's going in the right step uh, for Molly. She is she is now not going to be someone that's going to be on the back burner. She's going to, she's going to, um, uh, be powerful, be a powerful figure at her new job. And I'm proud of her, I appreciate it, and it's definitely given me some strength in my current situation to be like, okay, stand up for yourself lay your rules out on the table, you're a very valuable employee, um, don't let them take you for granted. So I thought that was a really good message in, um, in the whole episode, and um, I'm excited to see where she goes with that. 
So the third topic I'm going to talk about is Issa and her work situation. So Issa still works at We Got Y'all and um, it's not going well. She's now desk duty. She's not on the field, um, which she really hates it. And um, from last season you saw her friend Frida. She got um, promoted, which was really good because I did want her to get promoted. Um, Frida doesn't want to rock the boat. He's just trying to tell her like, hey, I think we should do this and blah, blah, blah. And then um, Frida's kind of like standoffish with it, which I kind of understand when you're in a new position and stuff. Um, I think definitely Issa needs a new job. Um, I forgot her boss's name, but she didn't seem too receptive to Issa's ideas of like these are people complaining and I've asked why and stuff um, and I just think Issa that work environment brings her down brings her mood down makes her think about the money she's not making makes her think about her living situation and I think that Issa needs to kind of look for a new job a job that will actually make her feel a bit more fulfilled or at least bring her energy up because right now she's really down and she's like um, her emotions are just kind of like she's sad and she's just um, very emotional so I think it would be best if she got a new job but um, she still works at We Got Y'all. So my fourth topic I'll talk about is Issa and the lift and party lift. So it was a good thing that Issa did um, when she decided to work on the side. Um, driving for Lyft. Unfortunately, her first customer um, was the customer that vomits in your car. But did you know, um, I believe, I, I don't know if Lyft does that, but Uber has like some kind of insurance that like if a customer were to damage your car or vomit in your car, um, Uber will um, re reimburse you the money. Sorry, not, sorry, Uber won't reimburse you the money. Um, Uber will um, take the money from the customer and give it to you. It works some way like that. Not necessarily like Uber is going to like steal your money from your account. But it works some way where you can get the money back to clean your car. Um, which I learned today. So yeah, so she's driving Lyft and stuff like this. She's earning money on the side, which is a good thing because she... Uh, she now knows she really, really needs to leave Daniel's place. She doesn't want to stay there anymore, which I don't blame her. So she convinces Molly, like, we're going to do this party lift thing, getting Molly out of her little funk, which I'll talk about after. And she's having, she'll, they'll be having a grand old time with their Capri Suns. I remember Capri Suns back in the day as a kid and stuff, which it's like... It's hard to describe a, a Capri Sun to someone telling um, when you're describing that, uh, describing it as like bag juice, um, but that's what it was basically. So then um, she picks up this guy, Nathan. Um, Nathan is so cute, but he kind of reminds me of Prison Bay. <laughs> Anyways, Nathan um, picks up Nathan, and Nathan is kind of new. He doesn't know his way. And they're like, oh, we're going to hook you up, we're going to bring you to the good spot and everything. And I guess they're using the equivalent of an Uber pool. So then they pick up this next guy, and this guy is like, <laughs> he's so obnoxious. He's asking about, oh, can you pass me two Capri Suns? And talking about the snacks they had in the car. Um, and stuff like that. So... So she's kind of hyping it up, like, this is a party left, yeah! And she realizes that um, this guy's starting to like, smoke a spliff in her car, which was mad disrespectful. And I don't understand. Like, who does he think he is? Um, anyways, so she's trying to... And like Issa, she's, she's still that awkward type of being. She A lot of her personality traits are like we share and like you don't want to tell somebody like oh, let's stop it. but you really do want them to stop it um so she's trying to and molly's trying to like oh, stop it anyways nathan being 
the gentleman he is stood up for her and said like, yo, the lady doesn't want you to do this, this man wasn't feeling it, and they ended up getting into a fight, which was crazy. Um, so yes, they got into a fight and stuff, and then Nathan got out of the car and bolted. Um, I think he said he's to slow down on the party lift thing, plus when you're picking up people, um, at least I know where I am when it's really, really late, when it's like club hours are ending, they're very like drunk and like crazy. You kind of just don't want to deal with them. You kind of just want to bring them from point A to point B. Anywho, so, oh my god, we lost power. Um, sorry guys about that. Um, for some reason I lost power, so I have to, um, I don't exactly remember where I where I left off, but let me get to topic number five. And topic number five is about Molly and Dro. So I'm very, very disappointed in Molly with all these boundaries and I'm a take charge woman that she's still messing around with Dro. But don't get me wrong, I love Dro to death. I think he's so cute and stuff. But Molly doesn't want what Dro wants. Dro wants to have a wife and to do whatever he wants. Molly wants a boyfriend, a fiance, and a husband. In that order type of thing. Dre was a fun thing for the moment, but now Molly is seeing that she really needs to get serious. So for me, I'm really, really glad that when she got with Dre, the sex was fire, they had a great time, but now she's kind of and now she's kind of put her foot down and said, Listen, Dro, like we have fun and it is all fun and games now, but we were either gonna be fuck buddies or we're either gonna be acquaintances or friends. He chose, okay, we'll be fuck buddies, but then he wants to do friend stuff, calling on the phone, checking up checking up on her kind of bringing her on dates and stuff, and she sees herself um, basically going over the boundaries she set. So I think Molly kind of, um, when she's dealing with Dre, sorry, when she's dealing with Dro, pushes all of her boundaries to the side, pretends they don't exist, and then she's kind of just like in la la land, basically. But what always gets Molly so kicked off is when she's all comfy, pillow talking with, with Dro, and then Candace calls. And then all of a sudden you see her having an attitude, things are changing, and stuff like this. And I was happy when Molly asked for her key back type of thing. So she's kind of taking back some of um, the different rules that she was breaking. And I didn't appreciate, which I don't know if everyone got, when Joe was like, that's my wife. I hope Molly knows that goes to show that you will always come second from Candace. You will always be his number two. You will never be his number one. And I think Molly is definitely looking for a number one. She's starting this new chapter in her life and she needs someone solid to be by her side. And not someone fickle or who already has someone like that uh, type of thing. So there you have it. So that concludes my review slash recap of season three, episode one of Insecure. Um, I'm very excited to see the next episodes and stuff. All of um, Issa Rae's content I've been watching since um, Awkward Black Girl. <laughs> have been very um, relatable to me. Um, I feel like she speaks to me and speaks to the, the inner person inside of me. Um, and I can't wait to see what's happen what will happen in the next episodes. I really hope that she gets to have um, gets to meet up with Nathan. But anyways, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. a dumb cop, fucking sick and tired of it, maybe I could front love, maybe I could buy a zip, maybe I could